everyone! A while back I created a video on how to take a PNG or a JPEG and turn it into a stamp. And since then I've learned a lot about brushes and also making videos. So I wanted to do an update and that's what this video is. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, I have my iPad here in split screen mode here um, because I want to go ahead and go to my website and select freebies and get to the clip art PNG files. And we're going to go ahead and click let's make stuff. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, agree to the license terms and download and tap download again. And then as it's downloading, it'll create and bounce this little teeny uh, arrow uh, that's encircled. And then you can tap that and you'll be able to see your downloads. And if you tap the shapes that you've just downloaded, it will take you to uh, your downloads folder on your iPad. And then you can see the zip file there. And if you just tap the zip, it will open it for you. And then you can open up the folder by selecting it. Now that we know that it's in our downloads folder, let's go inside of Procreate. So we're coming back into Procreate. Um, and let's see, I'm just going to shove that off to the side there. And I have a 12 inch by 12 inch canvas at 300 dpi. And this is the size that I like to work in when creating uh, stamps and brushes. So let's go ahead and go over to our wrench. And we're going to go ahead and add and select insert file. Now you might have a JPEG in your camera roll, and in which case you want to use that one. You can select insert a photo. And you can also take a photo. But today we're selecting a file from our downloads folder. So we're going to insert a file. And I want to go back to my downloads. When you get to the sidebar here, um, so go ahead and select downloads underneath the favorites there. And then just choose the shape that you want to play with to try this particular technique um, out on your own iPad. I think I'm going to go ahead and do this uh, uh, circle with that border here. And when I tap it, it brings it right into my canvas and I can change the shape if I want to. And I have a uniform selected, so I could do that. Um, so I'm just going to grab a little corner here and here. And then the one thing I want to do is make sure that it's centered. So I have snapping on at a distance of three, and that is the, um, the default. So what I'm really looking for, though, is uh, when I start moving around, I'm looking for the golden lines to tell me that it's both horizontally uh, centered and then now we want to have vertically. There we go. And we have uh, both sets of golden lines and we're good so we can let go. And then we can tap our transform tool to turn it all off. And now we're ready to go ahead and make a new brush. So one thing I want to let you know before we make our brush is that the Procreate Brush Studio is looking for a monochrome grayscale image. That means anything that is black to white, so with all the grays in the middle. <laughs> and the way it works is inside the studio, whatever is white, when you're using it outside in the canvas, that will be where the color is applied. That will be opaque or solid. Anything that is black is see-through or invisible or transparent. Now, in this case, our image is black. It's the opposite of what we're going to want, but that's okay. While we could invert it here uh, using our library, or sorry, our layers, um, and just tapping the layer and selecting invert, I always like to do it when I'm inside of the brush library so that I can see what I think it's going to look like. It's a little bit easier for my brain to see like what the final result might look like and then invert it when I need to inside of the library. But that's just a preference thing. So you can choose to do it however you'd like. Okay, so now let's go ahead and create a new brush. So we're going to go over to our brushes, our brush library, and we're going to go ahead and pull this down a little bit so we can see this little plus sign. We're going to tap the plus sign and I'm just going to call this custom brushes. And inside custom brushes, there are no brushes. So we need to tap this little plus sign so that we can create a new brush. And this is the default brush. And so the one thing I want to do right off the bat is change the spacing because I'm going to create a stamp from this, uh, this JPEG or PNG that we're using here. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is that I want to go down to uh, my Apple Pencil. And the default brush is sensitive for an Apple uh, Pencil uh, or any sort of stylus that you use that it's compatible with. And if you press, uh, it'll be 
more opaque than uh, if you're like have a light touch. But I want my stamp to be uniform no matter how much pressure I put down. So I'm going to turn this opacity all the way off. Now if you just use your finger and you don't have a stylus, you don't have to worry so much about that particular setting. But I find that it's just good to do that in case you decide to share your brush with somebody and then you can't remember like why it's doing the thing it's doing. I prefer to handle the transparency for the stamps outside in the canvas with a little slider. So well, that's again a personal preference. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is go down to properties. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and use a stamp preview. And the next thing I want to do is bring my size, let's see, I'm going to bring my size all the way up to the max size here. Um, that'll make a very, very big stamp, but of course we brought in a very, very big stamp. But it'll allow me, I'm going to also bring in minimum size just a little bit. It'll allow me, because it's a stamp brush, to change the size here. Um, so I can make it really big or I can make it smaller and I'm, I want to have options and I want to make it as big as I can if it's possible <laughs> All right, so once I'm satisfied, I'm going to go ahead and tap done. Okay, but now we need to get our shape in there So what are we going to do here? We're going to go over to our wrench We're going to select add and then copy canvas All right, and then we're going to tap our new brush and we're going to go to the shape and we're going to change the shape by tapping the little edit button right there and then import and then paste. All right. And as I mentioned before, anything that's white will be solid and anything that's black will be transparent. So this needs to be inverted. So what we need to do is just take two fingers and tap it and that'll invert it. And now we're good to go. So let's go ahead and tap done. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and tap done because we're completely done. You could always name it whatever you'd like. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and test our new brush right now as is. So we're going to tap done again. Okay. So now let's toggle the visibility here of that one and uh, add a new layer here. And we've got the color yellow selected. And I'm going to just dial that down because I know it's going to be big. <laughs> All right. So now let's just tap it wherever we think we want it. Awesome. Change the size a little bit more. Oops, there we go. You can add words to it, turn this into a logo, and you're good to go. I'm going to change the color on the inside to be a gray color, and I want to show you how this transparency works. I'm actually just going to go ahead and duplicate this because it has the settings I want already. I just want to show you kind of what happens here. Let's go ahead and go with a nice bright color there, like red. Because this was gray, it is now trans a little bit transparent. If you'd like to know more about how to make brushes, uh, check out this video right here on the, the left. And if you're interested in making patterns, check out the playlist here on the right. And meanwhile, I hope your day is amazing.